Last one. Well, All let's, right. Let's, let's, sure, let's make sure Cam likes it. We are live now to the third and hopefully the last review. Of that's that's what we're aiming for, yes. <laughs> they say the third time's a uh, time. Yeah, no, they say that, but then mm. we look at the APIs and we're like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's quickly. I actually have a chance of seeing what's happening on the screen. <clears throat> Next time we should bring popcorn. It's almost like a movie theater. <laughs> With a boring movie. So, let me just quickly pull up the notes from last time so I can ask you the hard questions of like, have you done what you promised you would? I did. Yeah, you say that, but... <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, I see some name and things. You do? Like, save the fun for later. Save it for later? Okay. okay. I think I checked most of the cases and stuff like that. But. Um, like the Linux specific drivers that don't have the oh, Linux in them. Right, right. Yeah, I haven't fixed that. Okay. Didn't you make them uh, internal? They're uh, internal. Yeah. So it's better, I fixed right. all the things. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but that was that wasn't. We we didn't go through that in the review. That was a comment that Josh made on the PR. Okay. So one note was we should rename the assembly. That we should be too right. We haven't done that yet. Okay. That is one of the what do we want to call the assembly now? We don't have a good name. Well, system IOGP. Emo, no, no, Emo no. wanted wanted it to be outside <laughs> of the system namespace. He wanted it to be Microsoft dot something. Okay. Well, there was one that there was one thing, but the, the previous one was because he also exposed things that are non GPIO related. Right. And it seems like we need a name for that. We can't use system device because it's already taken. Um, but we could come up with something else. Okay, so then let me oh, just strong. paste yeah, this yeah, over. First off, I had a really good suggestion. <laughs> it was? System.io.gp. System.io. System.device.io. Oh, yeah. It's not part of the name. So. Not really. Yeah. Like, like, humorously, I agree. You say that, but I think it has scotch when he suggested it, so maybe that was serious. <laughs> Um, all right, so what do we have? We have this, uh, let me just copy and paste this guy over. Um, and then we still have the naming of the, of the namespace. It's also true. Uh, are, you going, are you going through the notes? Yeah, I'm just copying and pasting stuff over so I don't forget it. Um, yeah, so one thing we talked about extensively the last time was the whole wait for event pattern. Have you done any major yeah, changes there? Yeah, I did. Like, uh, I, I went through a big review with uh, Stephen, which I don't know if he's on the call. Or yep, not. he just joined. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, yeah. So I, I talked with him a bunch about uh, what should we do for this. We have two scenarios that we want to support. One is kind of um, like a method that you're just going to call once because uh, you're just waiting for an, a specific event to happen once uh, and, and, and you want to block or you can call it async but it's just a look for one uh, one event uh, of this type and then we wanted to also provide a way of having a callback so that you would get for every single time that you get an event like that uh, you, you can you can submit a callback so those are our two scenarios we want to support so we have four APIs uh, that have to do with eventing. We have the wait for event, uh, the wait for event async, uh, and we have the add callback for pin value change event, uh, which is probably a little bit verbose. Uh, so which was the last one? Uh, the it's the third member. So add callback for pin value change event. It's kind of like adding a callback uh, to. <coughs> it's it's near the top of the list. Right. Oh. Yeah, so there's an add callback and then there's a remove callback. Right. I see. So oh, those okay. are the two. One more down. Yeah. So those are the those are the four um, <laughs> methods that have to do with eventing. Uh, a, bu a bunch of concerns last time were like, yeah, what if you call wait for event? You're blocking and then you don't get that event uh, because you missed it because you called wait for event too late. Uh, and I I I talked to um, Stephen about this and. We, we're basically saying that it's okay for us to have you have to press the button again if you're waiting for that. We see that... But that's why you have a timeout too, right? We have a timeout, yes. yes. So it's, we won't block forever. You won't hang. Right. right, so we won't block forever, that's one. And the other is we see people, like I've, I've seen how people use this in, in the Python uh, examples. 
and they sometimes use it for kind of like a, I want to wait to, to make sure that everything is hooked up correctly once my program has already started and then I'm just going to start looping. But before I start looping, I want to like block a little for, and wait for a signal to say, okay, go on. So like a press of a button or something. Your timeout, what is that in? Is that in, in milliseconds It's there? in milliseconds, yes. Okay. Should it, it be a time span? Should, yeah, yeah, should it be a, either a time span or should that say at least milliseconds? But okay. I would say time okay. span. We can, yeah. We can. I was thinking cancellation token instead. Tell me about that. Uh, so you can you can use cancellation token source to create timeouts and and if you do cancellation token instead, then you can choose either to have a timeout or uh, any event to happen to cancel this. Yeah, we, we don't could, really have a, a real way to cancel. We can we can do one thing, which is what Christoph suggested, which is while you're e polling on that uh, um, on that file to see if there was an event, what you can do is uh, even though you're passing in a timeout we can e-poll for a millisecond. So force it to only block for a millisecond and then check again. And basically, so have a have a loop that's checking okay, every right. millisecond but, or every... But doesn't e-poll work more at an interrupt level? It, do, it doesn't. So it, it, doesn't? It, it also has a... It does, but then it also provides a timeout. So you can specify a timeout in there, which right. is the way we... Call I mean, you, you, could also, you can also implement cancellation on top of e-poll. I mean, basically, you just remove the thing that you're... The, the file descriptor, you remove it from the e-poll... Oh, okay. Uh, and then and that cancels. Oh. Back to the cancel. Yeah. I see. I didn't know that. <clears throat> it's even better. Yeah, in, in the synchronous one, the int timeout should definitely be a time span. Uh, and then in the async, uh, possibly just replacing it all together with cancellation, For a cancellation token. token. Does okay. that make sense to you, Steve? <clears throat> I, I would be fine with both, okay, either okay. implementing the timeout on top of the cancellation token or having both overloads. Um, and then depending on how long we expect, you know, depending on the scenarios that we expect for the synchronous blocking, we could also imagine having a cancellation token there as well. Like we we have, you know, like on Semaphore Slim, for example, on both the wait and wait async methods, they both accept cancellation tokens so that you can unblock both synchronous and asynchronous waiting. Okay. So it really depends on what scenarios we're trying to support. I think okay. either is fine. It sounds like why don't we do all of it? Yeah, we can we can have cancellation tokens in both, right? As another overload. Yeah. yeah. So time spans and time span and then copy that and replace time span with cancellation. Cancellation. What's the granularity granularity of time span? Is it milliseconds uh, or six milliseconds? Yeah. I think. Yeah. Because we can only support that up to yeah, milliseconds. Yeah, yeah. I think. So. Almost okay. everything that takes a timeout, especially if it's talking to Win32, Win32 wants it in milliseconds usually, and we take total millis, and if you give it one tick, it, that's too big. So. Okay, so that's fine. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. fine too. The only other, the other thing that uh, Jose and I discussed related to the callbacks was whether it should be an, an add and a remove method or an add method that returns some sort of iDisposable. Right. Um, we have both patterns in the framework, and so I think it's a you know a judgment call about which we go with. But right. this is fine. Yeah, we pick with adding and removing just because it kind of like mirrored as well a little bit more uh, how an event handler where you do plus equals and minus equals. I mean, the, I would say it depends on what your expected usage is. If you think that people are going to we, add a callback. We don't think. That, that scope, is, then. yeah, that's the same thing that Stephen pointed out. And I told him mo most of the apps for th that are going to consume our library, the way they're going to look like is very much like an Arduino type of app where you have a setup and then you have a loop that just runs forever. Yeah. So I don't expect people to be removing callbacks that much of that that often. Mm -hmm. That's why we didn't want to return an object, but then you have to like yeah. have it somewhere. That matches my expectation on it. Right. So that's why we went with uh, adding and removing uh, instead of the returning an object that you can then dispose or, or like stop. Uh, yeah. I don't know that I, I would probably go with register remove instead of add remove, but okay. Just. Add is the thing that while an event, it's what an event calls. Once it takes arguments, it feels more like register. But that's I would just consider. So register callback. Which one we use more? Can we just like the, return like a tiny, like a lightweight structure, which would reference back to the GPIO controller, so we could like have like an array, no, not array, the indexer, and which would like instead of, instead of taking the arguments, we could take the uh, like how how would I say it. So you could say something like uh, GPIO controller, like uh, say the arguments, and then you can say like uh, yeah, no, like, like event or something like that. 
like an index. Like, so like a, so you, want you can actually use the event, event on that structure, so which would actually add it inside of the GPI controller the same way it does. I think I think I I kind of follow you, but if we were to do that, we would need to have a GPI open object. Uh, no, uh, right. If you no, want you could to have, have a st uh, only just, like a structure <laughs> which is used like only for a tiny bit of time, yeah. and it's like not actually like it's just so you can register like this, the right? callback. Yeah, something like this. And then the the, the return of the index that would be a struct that just basically stores the pin, the event type, and it has a reference back to the <coughs> controller. <coughs> okay. And then the then you just override the event, add or remove. To just basically make the other Maybe message like internal and then ping config or something like that. Like a, I see. But it would uh, just call back to the. Yeah. So that that looks nice, but at the same time, is that really discoverable? Yeah, like I'm. I was yeah, a bit, no, like the question is, what is the theme you're returning there, right? Like, what 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 name do we give them? But yeah, I, I think that like what I don't like. I mean, I, I had the same reaction that Christoph had. Is I don't like this add or remove method pairing because basically it's it's poor man's eventing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and events already have a, a shape in .NET. But mm -hmm. I don't know how we would. We have a. Th yeah. This is part of .NET as well. Like, there's there's uh, cases in .NET where we have this pattern. Yeah. So like, can you give an example? I don't uh, see a lot of value in the, in the event type. That's really just a filtering thing. I mean, not like that's that useful. I know. In the Windows implementation, I'm just going to have to filter it out anyway, manually, it's not a kernel filter. I see. Yeah, I was slightly wondering, like, is the pin number actually used for waking or registering a handler in a device, or is all of this just something that we should say, just filter it? No, we do, we do, like, at least at the pin level, could, we could definitely... Could you open the pin, pin event types? Like, like there's okay. different files for different pins, so mm -hmm. the file descriptors are different, the ones that we're watching. Well, could, could you open the pin event types, so just kind of for reference? Um, yep, if I, so does I find my mouse again? Yeah, it started with, pin should this be an event, and then saw it took ours. Is it falling or anything? It sounds like it's a simple No? Yeah. yeah. That sounds like, no, it's, I, I would say... I, I would remove that pin event. You, re you none? remove none? Yeah, so I would remove the pin event types in at all. I mean, not not use it inside of the uh, inside the registration. So just use, take the pin number and take, give this as the argument. That callback. But what if you want to have different behavior for like a button when it's unpressed or unreleased? That's you kind of like what this. The event handler say if raised. Else if it would be an event, it would be an argument into the callback, right? Instead of a pre-filter in the registration. One of the benefits of this is I know Windows Design already has this boolean rising. So, and if you if you do that, if you don't have that, then you will get an an interrupt, an epal interrupt every single time, like on that press that okay. on release. Yeah. Well, again, that's, that's what they're saying. They're saying that's fine. They but would, the, the question, it. like, if if these are actually inputs into <laughs> making the hardware be smarter. Or something, and and it's changing something. Then it makes sense to be a pre a thing that you give a registration. It is. But if things are just spewing, like apparently Windows is going to spew both of the events, and then you just have to filter it. Then like, well, why add filtering in this code when the user could do it, especially if they end up registering for both? That's in the Windows case. In the in the Linux case, you well, can. So if there are cases where it where it actually can make changes the what the hardware smart. will do, then yeah. then it makes. You can sense. configure what when ePoll will will. Uh, uh, come back. We have two events. One for the rising, one for the fall. <coughs> That's yeah. also a good point. That's how the rest of the UI Yeah, work. I think that would be like you would have then a more complicated uh, like you, what if you call the wrong uh, registration method? You really want it uh, unreleased but you call the unpressed or something like that. You could Oh, that's why, I mean, if you have events, if it's pretty called, straightforward, right? You say on rising and on, on rising plus equals to, uh, on falling plus, I mean, if, if, it, there, if, yeah, if it's yeah. an event timer. So that's if we do what uh, Christoph was suggesting, right? Yeah, like, I mean, just from a, from, a, from a UI standpoint, right? That's how all the UI frameworks work, where they yeah. have you know, on key down, on key up, right? And, or yeah. key pressed or key released. Yeah. yeah, part of the event mode is yeah. <clears throat> what it was. So that if you want one, one handler for both, you just specify the same handler. Yeah, yeah that's also a good point. Um, I, I agree with Steve where uh, for visibility point uh, I, I I like having this callbacks better than the indexer I know it looks yeah, you, it you, looks you, more you, .NET -y, uh to have it the other way it looks definitely like eventing um, 
but you might also not, for discoverability purposes, you might not see it. Whereas in here, you definitely just do controller dot, and you see that you can add callbacks. Yeah, but I mean, if you if you call the the property that forwards into some transparent struct, you know, pin events, uh, which then had an indexer or was an index property, then like that seems like maybe it would convert. So you'd be like, oh, that pin events. Might have and then pin, you know, sub pin number, and you're like, oh, like five dot on rising plus equal. No. So yeah. I, I think it could be done and could look dot netty and discoverable. Okay. Uh, so it's a consider. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, I just write it up and then you can play with that, right? It's, uh, yeah. Like, I mean, I, in general, I would say. Overall, like if you look at all the API design, like you have to figure out like how things compose anyway, and then you have to play with this thing to make sure that it works or not. I think the like my initial reaction to this add or remove is just I don't find it, I don't think it's particularly discoverable either because you kind of have to know what you're looking for to begin with. Uh, versus events are something people kind of know what it is. If, if you go to documentation, like it has its own section, and like you, depending on what, depending on how people discover this, it might be better or worse, right? So that's okay. why I'm saying you probably have to ship a preview and then just see what feedback you're getting. Okay. Well, another thing is we could do an event here and you don't specify a pin number. You just get all of them. You're just, you're just, well, no, that does change. For, it for changes the underlying, never mind. Yeah. Yeah, it would be basically you would have to epoll on every single file yeah, for every single open. pin that's open. Yeah. Ironically, like on the low level, it's like almost no op because you, pretty much like all of the pins are like represented as the integers, so like you can just like check for. Uh, but like on the kernel side, it's like every pin is like one file, which seems like a heavy way of doing this. Well, like I do seem to recall remembering when programming just uh, a pick in an Arduino, of, like that you need to write into a register which one you want interrupts on, mm -hmm. and so needing to. To not just always say, like, I want all of them, uh, it does seem yeah. useful. Okay. So why don't we keep this capability? We're only we're about to ship a preview one. Yeah. We have lots of time to make changes based on feedback, too. <laughs> so nice. keep it as add and remove, and then if we see enough people saying, hey, that doesn't look right, uh, we, can, we have this other option. Okay. I mean, unless people are really hate it, but... And you like could have a pin object, and that would have events on it. <laughs> yeah. But both solutions I'm have some. To that. Yeah. Both, both solutions are like kind of weird, <laughs> because it's like an event which takes the argument, like depending like how you want to register, which is like pretty unique. <clears throat> so that's the. I don't know if you guys want to look at any anything other. What were the things the that controller? You, you guys were worried about the most? What were the things you wanted the feedback on the most? Because I think, you know, this is our third time, I think. Right. Or third um, time looking at it. So, um, first of all, one thing was, um, which I think that this, like this morning, actually, we made a, a big improvement in there. Okay. But this is the driver. So you can think of the controller. Um, we actually have a, a very similar case with HTTP client. But... You can think of GBIO controller as the thing the user interacts with, and then the driver is the one that actually knows how to perform the operations because that, that's board specific. Um, so what we were thinking is um, every controller has an instant. If you show internals or privates, uh, you'll see that the controller has an, an, a the driver, driver, a private driver. And it's the one that it, it will call into to perform all the operations. Like a controller doesn't know how to open a pin, so it just calls on my driver open pin. Mm -hmm. um, so what we were thinking is making this GPIO driver an interface uh, so that people... That's a lot of methods for an interface. Yes. Uh, but we were thinking of doing that so that we can, first of all, uh, allow people that are writing subclass for GPIO driver to uh, uh, extend from, from other uh, parent classes. And the other reason was so that they can um, they can they can extend it from a different DLL. So the, we were thinking of having a like a world where NuGet packages would be added for different boards that we wanted to add support for, mm -hmm. and they would just implement this iGPIO driver and add support for that. That's the way we used to have it. 
now we changed it to be an abstract class with protected internal abstract methods instead because that way we will force people to always go through the controller because the controller will do extra validation for you. And this way your driver you can still version it and rev it because it, I right. bet you guys are going to be adding more to this. Over exactly. Time. That is and that your is, interface is going to lock you into Exactly. We would have to if we went to the interface we would have to have like a IGPO driver two, three, mm -hmm. or four. Yeah. Like all those. Well, I mean it depends on the default interface methods feature that we're looking at for C sharp eight and .NET core three, whether sure. that actually lands or not. Yep. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so but certainly like, not if you wanted if you wanted this for a you know a portable thing that didn't require the new versions then yeah the that's like one of the big there are several reasons you go for an abstract class instead of an interface a if you care about the difference in performance which is probably not relevant here uh, b if you care about the ability to add to it uh, which may be relevant here and three or c whatever I was using uh, if you want to have uh, default you know a, uh, functionality with implementation, mm -hmm. so you wanted to have, you know, uh, yeah. several abstract methods and then a virtual method, or several abstract methods and a non-virtual that you know, added some functionality and called them. Right. T today they're all abstract. There's no functionality whatsoever in the GPIO driver. Uh, we're we're shelling everything out to the specific drivers, but we could think of some extra functionality we add in the future where you do have some default stuff. Yeah, can you slim it down? Like, can you, can you, I don't know, like have some sort of like tied up protocol that only goes to like a few abstract methods and the rest is just wired up to those? It's not a one-to-one -one mapping to the control. It looks like it's a one-to-one, -one, but it's, it is fewer. Um, and each one of those do kind of represent a different operation. Yeah, what I'm wondering, for example, like, can you not make some things virtual and like have some default implementation that goes to others? Because it seems like a lot to implement. Like, well, for example, like Jose, isn't your wait for event async, isn't that virtual, not abstract? Oh, right, right. This is because I changed it back from uh, from interface. from an interface back to, a, uh, to an abstract class, so I, I didn't do that, but yes. I the, see. Okay. The, the async wait for event, it is a virtual method. Um, and it completes synchronously, I suppose, right? But, you know. also but I think that each operation, it is completely different in the drive. Like, it is very driver dependent the way you do things. Uh, so I don't think that, I mean, I could try, I could, I could take a look. But, and oh. it is a lot to implement, but it is all the functionalities of a specific board which yeah. is not, it's I, not a so I would keep this the class don't make this an interface I mean this is this is a very new space for us we're gonna keep adding more boards okay, and we're gonna keep learning as we add more boards yeah, and things are gonna change Joe also described to me that the controller uh, at least this sets up for the controller to do input sanity validation and now the driver is considered uh, as if it's calling a protected member so uh, the all of the implementers of these don't don't need to there should be some basic uh, Validation that they can assume has been done, and they yeah, don't right. need to do it again. Guarantees, right? Uh, so, which is part of why this is a nesting and encapsulation. But you do need to imp uh, implement the dispose pattern correctly. Uh, dispose should not be abstract; it should call a virtual it's, dispose oh, pool, and right. uh, and right. then it's virtual because it doesn't need to do it. <laughs> so. Okay. So the next, the GPIO exception. Here's <laughs> here's the thing I always poke at. Do we need another exception? Is like, are are you catching IO exceptions underneath and just what? turning them into GPIO yeah, I exceptions? I don't. I don't think like, we need the exception. Just that would be my feedback. Yeah. I just yeah. Like, or basically, if you're gonna add a new exception, it's like, are you gonna ask? Are you asking people to do different code paths or handle it a different way? And if not, or or if you were carrying additional information, yeah. which doesn't look like it is. I am not. I'm okay. not carrying additional information. So yeah, we could we could remove that. We and most IO most of the difference is is going to be just like the text message. So yeah. it's saying why it's an argument exception or why it's an IO exception. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if it carried a, a PIN number or you know anything like that, and it, it's not. It's it not always that. Then, then it would make sense to add a new patch. But otherwise, yeah. Yeah, it's it's not always related to a specific thing. You can have problems with initializing controllers or drivers or stuff like that. So. <clears throat> I mean, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one exception type you need. That's cryptographic exception that covers all things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's been my experience too, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> and then security says you don't need to give it text. So, so yeah, that's the exception. Then another thing uh, that might be interesting to get feedback on is 
the first class support drivers that we're providing in the same well I don't know if they're gonna ship in the same DLL for now they are uh, we might think of uh, so as you can see today we have like the hummingboard driver the Windows driver the Unix driver and the Raspberry Pi 3 driver um, so for those guys Which I don't have like an implicit Linux in their yes someplace. <coughs> all, all except for the Windows all except one. For the Windows yeah so for those guys, um, we don't know yet if we're shipping in in the same um, in the same DLL or if we want to have just the library code and the uh, the base classes in in the library and then have these guys um, in a different uh, DLL. But anyway, right now since they're in the same DLL, we have them all to be internal because we don't we are doing the internal logic for you in the factory methods when you initialize a controller. We are doing some parsing, and we are making sure that you're getting the best one out of those four. Um, how do I how do I override your logic and say like I know best? I want the hummingboard driver. I really want the Unix driver, even though I'm on hummingboard. One of the factory methods, if you scroll up, you know, a little bit uh, to the get controller methods. So yeah, it takes it, a driver. Yeah. Right. One takes a driver. So for that okay. one, you can specify. The, the okay. specific driver you, you want to use. reflect load the Unix driver to say that you wanted that one instead of the hummingboard specific. Right, if it's internal, yes. So it shouldn't. So the, how does that work then? So it doesn't work, right? Okay. It doesn't work. Okay. Right. So are you going to make them public? But uh, we can make them public. In theory, we are checking and we are making sure that we pick the yeah. right one. But if awesome. you know, if you know better, I guess we we should. Like, or or the customer needs to do a workaround because there's a bug in the hummingboard. Driver and we we're not going to have to fix. Right so, away. so they want to like they want to pick the Unix. Yeah, or something. General. Yeah, that right. makes sense. I think Course, this was like through our like conversation offline conversation with me and Tarek. Like so, the the feedback uh, the feedback here was like, if we ever like need to like find the user that people actually need to override it, then we can always make it public. But if we make it public right now, it's like gonna be harder to make, like remove them in the future. Right. Yeah, they were public originally, but after that discussion, that's why we decided to make it internal. But you do bring mm -hmm. up a good point. If you wanna, if you wanna add a hammer and say, I wanna pick the Unix driver. And also, like this is open source, so if someone really needs needs to do it, you can just copy paste the code. Yeah. Uh, so I actually, I've never even considered making them all internal. Like, like, are we just? So actually, I guess maybe tell me a bit more about that. We just think that. Well, Christmas we secret last time was that it feels very noisy. Like one proposal mm -hmm. was have an enum that you can pass in, yeah. and the enum just selects the correct implementation. That works too. And then the other one was you have factory methods. It also slims it down. The enum just... works. That that's basically my concern of saying I can still specify. So exactly. Right. That. Yeah. The the only scenario that I see someone wanting to do based off the types that we have right here is you want to ignore the specific driver and fall back to the generic one. Uh, which then, like maybe that could be covered with a, you know, or a, an extra uh, an extra create method, which is you know, use generic driver or whatever. So yeah. Windows 10 only uses the Windows 10 generic driver because it's all it needs. Uh, Unix would then use the Unix driver, even if a better one could be found, and then otherwise it's picked the best one. Okay. Because I can't think of any reason why we would want. To say, oh, I'm in a Raspberry Pi three, but I want to force use me to use the hummingboard, and yeah. like that feels more like you did it wrong. So maybe just finding a way to express the it, it, use use generic, even if you can though. Like, what if what if the next version of the hummingboard we don't detect it, so we will pick the Unix driver. Yeah, and yeah. then but you know better, you know that they're compatible, okay. so you can pick the. The and then, yeah, the if they place. are public and in the same assembly, then I would suggest that introducing the dot drivers. Uh, namespace. namespace and moving them in there so they're they are noise uh, the implementation types are they're in a different using you're probably not going to suck it into most of the stuff but also the, they don't okay uh, that, like if we make them internal this will kind of make people actually want to contribute and like fix it to maybe fix it because like it's it should be simple fix like if we like if the new hummingbird uh, like shows up mm -hmm. like then Person can like literally just like go to our code contribute and it depends, on the, depends on the user. Yeah. Well, even even if it's easier, right? I don't yeah. get it binary instantaneously, right? Like I still have to wait until somebody actually goes through the motions of publishing a new yeah. one. Like like it's hard to beat like oh instead of doing let's let's clone the report, let's provide a fix. I just knew of the other type or pass it in directly, right? That's like literally ten seconds rather than like half an hour of work. 
and then an indistinguishable number of days until I get a binary. Would you scroll to the controller again? Um, so, is the is the consensus here then that it's better to just have them public so we don't have to introduce a new enum? Or I would not make them public. I would either have factory methods with specific drivers, like basically have like GPIO driver create methods that give you specific instances, have the enum. Um, and still have your still have your GPIO driver uh, public constructor for people to roll it around. So they have oh, a great one. No, you already have the thing. <laughs> right, so I'm saying don't delete. <laughs> it's, it's right. It's like two under the uh, the structure. Up like ten methods. To get controllers. Yeah, to get controller where you can pass in your GPIO driver. Right. I'm saying still keep that. Yeah, that one we have. To, yeah, yeah. For, for, yeah. For people rolling want... their own driver. Do we want get controller uh, factories now that the controller is um, no longer singleton? Should those just be constructors? You create one by default. We can, yeah. We or can you have create them, one with the driver. We can have them being constructors as well. Yeah. Right now they're factory methods. There's no specific reason why they couldn't be constructors anymore. Just for code we use, uh, but we can do the same. Like, well, my, get controller my is. is you know, if I get controller, am I creating a new one? Or, you know, how do you? you how know? do you know? Yeah, it's this was more. If of it's a... called create controller, that would make <laughs> sense. But there's, if that's the point, there's no reason to not just have a constructor. Right. right? It was more about like new is glue. That was that's one thing, and the other is new is glue. Yeah, that's just what they say for the factory pattern. Okay. Okay. When you when you new up something, you're glued okay, to gotcha. that type. Gotcha. Where in, in, in get control like a factory method. You but when it's a sealed it. class that extends object, you're glued to it anyway. That yeah, is, <laughs> that is true. Uh, and the other reason was that like get controller with no parameters calling to calls into get controller with number scheme, which calls into the other. So it was a way of of uh, in constructors you can't call out another constructor, but I can definitely yeah. fact. Yeah. You just say this, this of the thing and have semicolon. Or yeah. open curly, close curly, because it doesn't have to do semicolon. Yeah, if you want to do some setup before that, you can't. Like in this particular case, uh, if you don't pass in a driver, we want to figure out which is the best driver and then call this with that driver. You make a static method and you call yeah. that one. Exactly. Right. This you can guess driver. You can do that, yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, just like the, nothing here is technically stopping it. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like you, yeah. you could have it as a constructor. We decided to have a factory method because, it, in theory, originally it was a, a, a singleton, yeah. and because um, it was easier to just reuse code. But we could definitely have all that functionality. Yeah, I think, I think I think the three arguments <coughs> that were for factory methods were almost consistency with the rest. So it all looks uniform because everything else was driven off of factory methods at some point like with the pin part and the controller part. Um, and then, well, the, the third issue was that we talked about was the whole class hierarchy, right? So there was some, at some point we talked about not having the driver at all, just having the controller hide this entirely. So you want to be able to change your class hierarchy and hide the instances, factory makes sense. And then the third one was, um, you know, the lifetime management, if you don't want to disclose whether an object gets created or you have a signal, you know, your cache or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, given that you always create one now, Given that the class hierarchy is sealed, and given that you don't really have any factories left, um, so just turn it back to. A yeah, constructor. I mean, if you can get away with just new, then it's, okay. it, it tends to be better because people know what to do with it. Makes sense. Uh, and you could even get away with just two. You you have one that's got a default um, parameter on the on the uh, numbering scheme, numbering. and then the other one takes a driver and a numbering scheme, which is also defaulted. So if, if there are no defaults. Our general overloading rules in order of complexity says that uh, you would flip driver and numbering scheme in that one uh, because you go from zero to numbering scheme to numbering scheme and driver. Uh, there are times when it makes sense to do the other one, and if it's <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. see things to consider. <clears throat> well, you could still make it just single constructor, right? You can say. Driver is defaulted to null, numbering scheme is defaulted to something, and then, well, null driver means figure out the driver, right? Okay. <clears throat> In which case, pick the order. Um, so the one question that I had from last time is, like, I don't know whether you talked about this when I was typing in the notes initially, like, the whole wait for event discussion we had was whether it's lossy or whether it's buffering, like, like what's the, what's the current? Losing events is fine. 
Okay, that's that's what we're saying. Well, all of them will lose, but which way? Like, so one is you can have the buffer, right? Like a file system watcher. And once the buffer's full, you start losing because you haven't been processing enough. Or there's this way here where you lose them because you're in the customer's callback code and you're losing events because it's unbuffered. Like because they because the customer's callback code is finished and you've gone back to process the next one. Right. So, if you're doing I, if you're doing wait for event. Uh, Theoretically, you're only waiting for the one, so you don't have this problem. If you're doing the callback, uh, what we do internally is, if you register for a callback, we do have some sort of buffer, so you don't lose events. So there's like a separate thread that's listening in, into those, and 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 then like we can definitely implement another thread that will just check a, some sort of queue or something of like, hey, I want to, I, I have to get this patched. And that way, there's one thread still listening to events, and it's not calling the callbacks. And then we have the other one that's calling the callbacks. And and uh, do you have some public property to adjust the buffer size, or you don't care at this point? Or? We don't have it now. We can we can have that. We don't have it today. How do I wait for any event? You do event type, and it's a flags attribute. So you just set both rising and falling. And for any pin. I can't. You can't. You have to do it for every single one that's open. Again, it's a hardware thing. You have to tell the pen to do something. Yeah. Tell the hardware to do something. Yeah. Instead of the callback, you return the task. So you don't have a callback at all. You have a task. And like once the task is complete, you can just say continue with. And like then you don't have any callback. And you can wait for the event by saying that way. Do you need a finalizer? <coughs> I don't. If it's disposable, uh, you should have one, right? Nope. Nope. No. Nope. But no. You only, only add a finalizer if you need one, and if you're adding a finalizer, our guidance says what, use a safe handle instead of adding your own. Uh, I don't need a finalizer. Dispose is fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. And then. Uh, shouldn't the should the finalizer call dispose if it hasn't been disposed? Uh, well, it's a sealed class, so if it, the only time you're supposed to have a finalizer is if you're holding native resources, and then the thing, the only thing that should hold native resources now is a safe handle. So when the when the object gets garbage collected, it would lose its reference to a safe handle. The safe handle would then get finalized, and the safe handle's finalizer would deal with it. But the, okay. the that's control that's itself. the general case. There are exceptions. I don't know what kind of quote quote native resources this has, but if all it did was like call a method to turn something on and then it needs to call a method to turn something off, then you probably would want a finalizer. Yeah. Well yeah, or a safe handle because you need to handle the deal of the events are open and closed and you need to deal with corruption of right. that. But the controller only has managed resources. It doesn't have native resources. Yeah, so the driver have may have uh, some native resources. They right. have file descriptors. And then any and driver types that then needs to be finalized, they would register their own finalizer to say call dispose false. That's our that's yeah. our current of okay. the flip back and forth dispose guidance. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can remove that. Uh, and we so we always have a, a composition problem when disposable things are passed in a constructor. Uh, if you pass null for the driver, then clearly the controller owns the driver that it built. If you pass your own, I assume we're disposing it and dispose. That can just be solved with docs because I can't think of a reason that you'd want to use one after. Of course, people said that with all the stream types too, and then all the streams have a now have a leave open parameter. Yeah. Uh, so just a thing to think about. Okay. Yeah. I don't know that you for now. Yes, the like dispose is disposing the driver as well. Yeah. So, so that yeah, if you're just passing a, it in, it might you might. Think just that be a thing in a dot comment. Like the yeah. driver that is passed in will be disposed mm. during disposal. Yeah. Okay. Passing ownership. So is there anything else you want to shut up about before we talk about the namespace stuff? Uh, <laughs> can we just take a little glance uh, into I2C, like PWM, mm -hmm. I2C, and SPI? Because we haven't talked about those too much. Yeah. Can event types is flags, right? Yes. Okay. That's all. It's plural. And do you want, do you want none? Emo, are you not? Does this not show the attribute? It doesn't. Show it doesn't. Well, if you enable it, it does. If you don't, then it doesn't. Okay, that's fine. The flag attribute's a little different than other attributes. With with none, do you also want all or something like that? That four is falling and rising together. 
right, rather than all any. We can we can have any. Well, all might be problematic if you ever add a third one because we can never change the value. Yeah, we would change. What's well, the use case for none? We'd have to change the meaning of it, right? That it still means. Right. So it's just the flat, how is the flat term? So you can't change the value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, it's, it's just, just, just to default. find out. They can just it's, 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 it's value for whatever, but they it means all the all the ones. Like, three. Yeah. Uh, they can just order rising and falling. I don't think it's an all. Right. Okay. If you think you make it both, it's fine. I think all might be problematic if you had a third one because then you would have to change the meaning of that thing, right? Right. I guess it depends on what the third one is. Falling, rising, changed? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you say all now, the problem is, sure. well, all in D1 only meant falling and rising, and now you're like, well. Yeah. I, I, no, yeah. it's all except for this one. Yeah. <laughs> I guess falling I would be saying that it's all and, and that one as well, whatever that. And what's is. the regular? Is it, is it common to have none and. Falling, rising. Well, I think in event, like in, I think in flags, you kind of want a none because I mean you already have a legal default. zero value, right? Yeah. And uh, if you're two string it, it's just really weird. It's just zero shows up. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you, Vanessa. All right, back here. I mean, I assume that your methods will fail if I try to register something for none, right? It, they should. Yes. Yeah. Um. I can see. Right. So I get my fucking <laughs> uh, So um, for I two C, uh, I mean this is it's pretty basic. You have uh, it, it, it kind of e echoes what you have in GPIO in in a way. Uh, so you have this connection settings um, uh, class that will just represent uh, the specific like. Which address am I connected to? Uh, well, which device address do I have, and what the bus ID I'm connected to? Um, and so, uh, and, and the the interface uh, I2C device that just represents uh, like yeah, like like something that can interact with. Um, <coughs> what, what we're gonna have it, how how it's gonna look in the encode is you're gonna have for a sensor. And the sensor is gonna let's say that it supports as both SPI and I2C. So that sensor library will have an an I2C device, and it will have an SPI device. And depending on which protocol you hooked it up to your Pi or whatever board you have, uh, you'll be calling either the I2C device methods or the SPI device methods. Why don't we have some some things other than just pass around bytes and ints? Like we have like display boards that take you know display a string of text and things. And so I know, like you can do that with this. We have, we have people have to cast it to ASCII values and and then pass the character at a time. I'm, I'm wondering, should we this have... implement stream a stream instead? Stream, stream, stream. So we can do string writer, like stream writer, and on top of that, and just call it a day. We are so answering to your question. Yeah. We are kind of expecting that the library of that specific uh, sensor because it. We didn't think that that was like general enough. Uh, yeah, I don't it wasn't know. used across all I. It was just one of the first devices. things that we stumbled across. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Um, usually, most of I two C devices, the way they work, if you look at their data sheets, are just registers, and they they are different sizes, and then depending on the size, you either read or write into those registers. Um, so you never really deal with uh, uh, like uh, characters, ASCII characters, or anything. So like for me like Except this is LCD like yeah. have, taking but LCD display is so, not well at least yeah. the one we have it's mm -hmm. not uh, I2C or SPI What's that one it? is GPIO. Okay. So yeah. So like for me like taking both buffer and the uh, like being able to write and read like integers is like kind of weird because now we have to think about is this like actually like a little end or big end or like how are you actually writing those integers? So like you want to write by. But like, if you make it like a stream or just read and uh, like only do read and write, and then maybe imp like provide some implementation which like ends up being a stream in the end, like some something like I two C stream or something like that, and then which like takes the this thing which only implements like read and write, that would like uh, simplify that. Why why is read void? The first one because you pass in the buffer and uh, you tell them like you if that buffer the the value that it's read is going to be written into that uh, buffer. Is it, is it guaranteed that it's going to be exactly count? 
it is very like you're passing in the count. They so can't ever have, write less. Right, but like a, on streams, for example, or, or you know, if, if there's only five bytes total available and you ask for seven, what happens? Yeah, so you want to read a line or something like, like, how do you do that? Yeah, so typically, I would think in that case, the read would return a count. Yeah. Right. You actually. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, it, I mean, that's what you know. Stream dot read has the same signature except it returns it into. Because yeah. yeah. if I, well, if, if I see read. has a or square, how are you supposed to pronounce it? If it has a, I am closed, then if there were four bytes followed by I am closed, you can't fill the thing. But now you have. Your contract is unspecified as to what you would do, which is why you yeah. return the int of like I read four. You asked for a hundred. I read four. Okay. <clears throat> and then uh, and the, the read byte read you in thirty two. Those throw if it can't get yeah. enough data for it. Yes. And then uh, uh, why uh, why do we not have span overloads here or only span? We should probably yeah. We could change that to be span. I mean, honestly, why don't you? I mean, I, I like Chris's suggestions. Like, I would just have two methods that basically give you back a stream for either reading or for writing. Because then you compose with everything else. Because realistically, what you have underlying is that you just you can read bytes, you can write bytes, right? That's exactly what stream does. So, mm -hmm. like, I would think Unix I to C device would have open read and it gives you back a readable stream and you have open for write it gives you back a writable stream and then you can do whatever you want to do like we have all the span overloads in the world you can you can you can you can pass it to a binary reader if you want to just read a few ins or whatever right and then you don't have to do any of that the only thing you have to do is implement stream that writes to your device and that's it okay otherwise it's a never ending thing of like adding more overloads of read of write <laughs> that's true yeah that makes sense to me oh, especially considering it's interface and like since we already like made the internal for the uh, like the controller and the, the hummingbird driver and stuff like maybe we should also like Unix ITC device make internal as well. Right? So make this okay. instead of being uh, an interface, have it be uh, abstract. Uh, ab uh, yeah, I would say follow like the same convention. Yeah, the same convention we do with yeah. the driver. Okay. Unless we are convinced this is the final shape. Like so if you make it a stream, then it's pretty much. Stop we just it. yeah, we thought okay. that this maybe this interface wouldn't version that much uh, compared to the driver. Yeah, it sounds That's like it might not. Like if you make it like I two C stream or something, and then just implement like underlying like read and write operation, like maybe like read byte or write byte like whatever like that. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it's going to version that much. That's why we kept that one as an interface. Uh, but like the driver, still, like if you make it a I two C stream, then you don't need that at all. You just yeah. need one class, and that's it. So I yeah, think this is a great example of interface that I don't think is by definition stable. Right? Like this looks very unstable to me because yeah. like adding another overload of read or write seems completely reasonable, right? And then you're completely screwed with an interface. Okay. Uh, with the stream, yeah, then you just pass it to a binary reader, right. and you can read all the things it provides. Right. I mean, one thing you could do is you could just completely remove this one. Or just replace this one with an abstract base class. Mm -hmm. You could potentially hide this one and make this a factory method here that just gives you back this guy similar to the other thing that you that you had. Um, or you just say screw it. You, you, this guy is a is a virtual base class, meaning you have virtual methods, but you can still new it up. And then you just have one type that represents yeah. uh, the whole thing. Were the uints and the connection settings discussed previously? Uh, no, no, I the think connection settings. No, we in general don't take you in. Yeah, you won't probably in. We won't take what you in. Oh, you because you in's are shitty to deal with. Yeah. Okay, we then always immediately start with if it's negative throw, but mm -hmm. int is the prevailing four byte numeric type that we use. Okay, <coughs> you int if you actually need the two billion to four billion range to have. We, some we don't, in. there's not, yeah. Yeah. hopefully, there's no device IDs in that range. I mean, no, no, definitely no. Device address, they are all positive, mm -hmm. uh, but they they use seven bits at most, mm -hmm. always. Okay. They have the same problem. <laughs> so yeah. it's passing side Let's look at PWM. Sure. Is it going to be the same? PWM I mean. is very, very similar to GPIO. Sorry, I'm typing notes at the same time. 
uh, presumably the same feedback that Christoph had for ITC applies to SPI. SPI, SPI looks it and, pretty yeah. much the same as this, yeah. so um, it's probably not worth looking at it. What is actually the difference between it in terms of the public surface area? Actually, could we look at it for one second? Sure. Since we just did ITC. The way the it's mostly the connection settings. Yeah. So the actual uh, interface and the device the same. look very similar, yeah. except that you have a little bit more stuff you can configure, like the clock rate. Yeah. Uh, and and some of the like there there's just a, a little bit uh, different things that you can configure, and um, the difference in SPI is that you have that extra pin that you have to keep around and that's for the, the chip select right the chip select pin so that's the one that you drop to e email land worth click SPI save <laughs> else we're going to finish before you get to it <laughs> oh and the SPI modes which I can never remember like this is actually a good thing to oh right this mode zero one two three what is this? <laughs> they, no one's gonna know how to do this without. I have it in, it. so it's documented. I have it common. <clears throat> yeah, we need better names. Or these are the actual names in the spec. Th these are the names in the spec, and so this is what happens when like engineers make specs. Look at these names. Like, <laughs> this is, it sounds like it could be just an integer instead. Yeah, well, but it's that's the, mode Do you want me to explain what SPI mode is? Or yeah, yeah remind me again. So, the. So the it's SPI an between zero and four, <laughs> <laughs> and you pick the one that is appropriate for scenario. What's wrong? So with yeah, what's, what, why don't you understand? <laughs> well, so, I guess I don't understand when I want to use three versus one. Um, so the way SPI devices work is you have a you have a clock that's ticking, and then you have another another pin that is just sending bytes. Uh, so it's kind of like a, how do you call that language? Morse code. You're Morse saying? code. Yeah. Sure. It's it's a little bit like Morse code, but anyway, um, what the different modes are is uh, two modes will, which I believe are mode zero and mode two, means that uh, the value is like the ticks are when when the clock is on one, not mm -hmm. on zero, and it's called C like that variable is called C pol or okay. yeah, clock polarity or something. And and then mode one and mode three, the, like they they use the other, where zero is the the tick. And how do I decide what do I use? It's basically the devices that, that are on my the devices chain documentation that will say tell I you. have to be mode one or exactly. something. Exactly. And I can't mix and match if I have a device that's mode one. I can't put on the same SPI chain as a device. Not on the same three. bus. Because that's fine. It, you you have to use the same clock on the okay. same bus. And and Ooh. then um, the other the other variable is uh, the clock phase. Which means um, the ticks will they come uh, half a tick after the pulse mm -hmm. is registered? So if the pulse is one or zero, will the value be like half a second uh, off, off faced uh, from from uh, my my pulse, or will it be at the time of my pulse? What what, so what that, do other libraries use for these names? They do these huge long names for these, or they do they literally do mode zero? I think they do mode so, zero mode one. So mode so again, like one is like uh, so basically one bit is controlling if you're getting the impulse uh, like in the middle, or one is in the beginning, and the other one is is at high or low. Exactly. So you could make these plugs and add those options there and make the mode zero one to two uh, three like do bit must of those two. I didn't follow that. So, mean, like the so color would like uh, or... leave mode zero, one, two, three, and like as is, like mm. because they they are kind of spec their names, yeah. name. But you can also add other things like on uh, like whatever the names for those uh, two variables were. Yeah. Make them yeah. so so they they kind of like are like cause I, I assume like these numbers represent like one of the bits of those numbers mm. is uh, telling you are you in the middle or are you in here, and the other one is telling you are you here or here. So just make the mode zero kind of uh, bit mask of those combinations. We can, we you can do that. So then, then you, yeah, have, so you have, have an, them, yeah. you have we a can, spec way of saying, and then you have a sane right. way of saying. Right. So actually, just looking at the SPI mode um, from Windows, it it also uses the names mode zero, one, two, three, okay. but but it has a in the summary um, it comment says so CPOL equals zero, comma CPH equals zero, CPHA equals zero, and then 
I see the the various other. So we could do that with uh, the. Yeah, assuming the bits are not like kind of crossed or anything like, but I, I no. I, I would guess it's gonna be like one bit is gonna be. Or there has to be some sort of tool tip in Visual Studio when you mouse over this, like it tells you what the heck. Is. Yeah, <laughs> that's not common. Do yeah. 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 yeah, I definitely added yeah. comments on the two-bit so. value of the uh, <clears throat> clock polarity being the high bit and the clock phase being the low bit. Right. right. Okay. Right. right. And so yeah, that's SPR. So the only thing different, if you see, is the connection settings. It has a little bit more stuff. It has the, it don't, doesn't only have the bus ID, but it also has the chip select line. It has the clock frequency. It has uh, the length of the data that you're going to be sending or you're going to be taking, and and the mode you're operating with. Okay. Uh, but other than that, it's the exact same thing. If you see the interface, it has the same numbers. The same thing you can write. <coughs> so I guess I mean Which will be we'll, we'll, yeah, yeah we'll change that. Can we use maybe configuration instead of connection settings because it's a bit shorter? Makes uh, it slightly less. Sure. SPI configuration. Yeah. Sure. We picked connection settings because that echoes what we have in WinRT, but yeah, we can we can change it. It just seems long, and like I mean, you're just lucky right now that all the protocols are just three-letter words. If you ever have something longer, then. Right. Yeah. So your your advice is global search in place for connection settings. Yeah. But still, if you make an okay. SPI stream, you can put the settings directly on the stream. Right. You want to get I don't know. Connection settings sound. I mean, sounds more correct. It sounds, it sounds more, more accurate to me. Yeah, but it's already been designed and API reviewed in Windows, so why not just use that? I'm not clear either way. Yeah. You know, how do you configuration do you? is. Well, configuration is a term we use in .NET everywhere else, I think. But, like, it's not I mean, like I don't it's, a, it's a short word anywhere. Yeah. Do we use config in like for like under system net for various things, or do we use connection settings? Well, I just was just thinking system configuration the namespace, but like, uh, um, which one? Sorry. System configuration the namespace. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I'm not sure true. we have many classes that use the term. Crypto config. Well, yeah, crypto is generally not an area where I look for naming inspiration, but. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of similarities here with that's SPI that's and ITC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. When you're ready, if you want to switch to PWM. Um, yeah, I can't see anything quickly in the namespaces because search is not great for this one. Here. Um, so Emo will follow up on that one for us. We'll crash. Uh, no, it doesn't crash anymore because I just do the good old catch all, move on. Mm. Um, okay. <laughs> so yeah, this one um, it kind of it, it is similar to GPIO in the terms that you have a controller and then you have a driver uh, and then you have an interface, which I guess will have the same feedback in there that we probably want to make that. Uh, so what about like reading class? This is just for writing? Yeah, reading is not. Right now, we only support hardware PWM, mm -hmm. not read, uh, not uh, software. And so we don't support that. Hardware only supports uh, okay. writing. But, but when reading. we support reading, does that mean do these names no longer work well if we start adding read? Or I mean, sorry, uh, yeah. Oh, because we're using start and stop? Yeah, should these be, yeah. Start, write, or something like that? I don't know. I'm just, I guess I'm just trying to think the, the next revision of this. Um, I'm kind of curious, what's duty cycle? Is it the fill? Or what, what's that? It's not just like hardware term, like how, how long is it? Uh, duty I said this was called fill. That's what's called in Polish. That's what's called kind of curious. No, duty cycle is used across like all of the PWM. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't, I didn't be in English, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, should this be like decimal instead of double? I'm kind of curious. What should be? Decimal instead of double. Single rather than double for the duty cycle? Like, should it for be? Both, I would say. Are you actually uh, frequency, I don't know about that. The frequency sounds like it could be like an interview, like if you... Because I think it, if we, it could be like megahertz, it could be like yeah, 24 points or something. something. Maybe what, uh, or something with a dot. We have I, a double... Like I, I don't think you ever say like 5.5 megahertz yeah, or well, yeah. hertz, hertz, do you? Well, I guess, what is the unit of measurement for this? For that, it's frequency. Frequency what? is the... But we have is it as a double as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Is it, is it in hertz? Is it in like frequency? Is in megahertz. Is in megahertz. So okay. then yeah. we would have a. Okay. 
Yeah. And you want to so, maybe make that clear that the unit is bigger. Yeah. Hurts okay. or not just hurts, right? Same thing with like those timeout variables. And right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you time out in milliseconds. Or is that also standard? That's what we did with Windows. We, we took things in megahertz. I think so. Okay. Do you know, John? What is it? The frequency uh, are in megahertz. Is it on or? PWM? Uh, yeah. Let's see. I'm pretty sure it was, but I might be wrong. And they use doubles as well instead of singles. That's also okay. Okay, frequencies are double. Yeah, actual frequency double. Does it specify? Oh no, it's in hertz actually. It's hertz. In hertz. Yeah. Okay. Actual okay. frequency is hertz. So we probably want to match that. Yeah, and have that sort of in the name. So if it's in hertz, then it doesn't so actually need to be double, but. They've already used double with Windows, so. Yeah. The one thing that is true with double versus single is that double is a bit more convenient because you don't have to suffix your literals. Because if you just type 2.4 in C sharp, it's a double. Right. Mm -hmm. say 2.4 You have to do that. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, uh, practically speaking, I mean, WPF, like, was very sorry that they went with doubles everywhere. They regretted that decision, but Why? I think it, because it's just, not how any of the hardware works. Oh. Like all the hardware uses floats, so you okay. have this constant back and forth. Mm. Um, especially bad for things like vectors where you pack the whole thing and then you want to send it to the graphics card and like you know, have to like do a bulk conversion there. But I think in general, like from a from this kind of stuff it doesn't matter, I guess, whether you go with single or flow. I mean the worst that can happen is you the underlying representation is slightly yeah. off and then you have some rounding, but okay. Because right. underlying this is decimal, right? It's like a uh, it's encoding like how the, the how is like internally like usually PWM. depends on which driver you're using but like okay. if you use the, the if the unix driver uh it is it is actually an integer mm -hmm. is what what's used uh, so they don't support floating. i'm wondering why windows did doubles for this frequency it's usually like if you don't care it's a probably a good unit to start with i mean mm. it's like the Fiction free or most fiction free. So you said you didn't want to use the system device namespace. Is that what I heard at the start of the meeting? Uh, Emo yeah. said that uh, he didn't want to use system in general, system. just because um, Jan pointed out last review that um, this is an area that in five years might look completely different. Mm -hmm. uh, so well, system. These are like protocols from the late eighties and things. Yes, I two C and all. Yes. But like the drivers and what can you do with the controllers and things mm -hmm. like that, that they, that might change. Okay. Um, so he said probably having it under system or, or email even said it. Uh, if you have something under system, it is kind of a thing that we, uh, it, it goes with it with the name uh, that uh, we are kind of like going to keep that around uh, for a long time. I mean that's the that's the intent, right? Like it's all fuzzy. I mean, like we usually use system because it happens to be where most of our team publishes their stuff on there, right? But we're not very consistent with like the guidelines in general. Like I mean, system used to be a very simple definition, like ships in box, right? Now it's a bit more. So what do you want to send? Do you want to call well, what like, she said Microsoft like Microsoft device. dot extensions dot GPIO like Microsoft dot you know. Well, Microsoft extensions. I hope we have a like, slightly better name than that, but uh, yeah, like. As I well, said, like, Microsoft.device.io. I think the only thing, but like, see, I, I'm kind of thinking if we said Microsoft. Dot, that means generally it's going to be it's kind of like Windows. Dot, right? Mm -hmm. And if it's System. Dot, that means dot .NET Framework to me, or or dot .NET yeah. Core in this case. Well, one standard. more question uh, with regards to PWM, like, how does the user know like which channel they can use? It's the same as how do they know which pin do they use? They have to look. At, they have uh, to look. But the, the there you have like a pin count, right? Uh, like on the on the controller. on the controller for GPIO, yes. But you can't use every pin. You mm. still need to know the documentation to see which one you can hook. So is PWM on. channel here? This is a good question. Is PWM channel here like the the uh, logical PWM pin number on the board? No. What no, is it? It, it is it is a completely different namespace. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you see the pins, if mm -hmm. you see the pin out, it will tell you which channel is each pin. Right. So that that for example, I don't know, pin eighteen is PWM channel zero. Right. So then PWM channel in here is zero. Be zero. Yeah. 
But like the, so the driver can detect like what channels are allowed, right? Or, or can they not? Is it like possible? Not the not the Unix driver now. And we don't we so just just Pokemon. So we don't want to let people do. I mean, you already have like your pin numbering scheme for other things. You don't want to let people pass in in eighteen to mean channel zero. That's the way we had it, and we chat with uh, actually the the guy that developed the winner T APIs, mm -hmm. and he said. It's not good if you start mixing these two worlds mm -hmm. of GPIO and PWM. They're okay. two completely different concepts, which they both happen to align in the sense that they both use the same pin. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like an SPI where you use the buzz ID. You never use the pin, pin number mm -hmm. uh, you're connecting to. Oh, what about after dark, but you know you need the pins to establish your SPI, I guess. Well, I guess are you saying you also do SPI zero? Yes. There, okay. Yes. So you don't use the pins. In SPI, the buzz ID is like zero or one, mm -hmm. or which is it doesn't mean that it's hooked up to the pin, mm -hmm. zero or one. You know, so, so, kind of going to the same um, binary decision or both best of both decision here, where here you're specifying channel number versus channel object. Yeah, because or actually PWM pin object is what Windows uses. And it's the one that's got the start, stop, get activity, duty cycle, set activity, duty cycle percentage. Wonder if we should follow that a little more closely. Yeah. So, so what, what are we? You said we're. You said a few more things that we're missing here. You said. Yeah. Um, activity was that. Get activity duty cycle. Get active duty cycle. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, that's yeah, getting percent. the duty. Okay. Getting the duty cycle. And it's retrieves the duty see. cycle for this pin. The duty cycle percentage from zero. Because they have, and they call it get active because they can tell what is the maximum duty cycle that you can yeah, th This one, it feels like maybe it should because, like, pretty much everything is like related to like a specific channel. So it is the same for the GPIO controller. The reason why we didn't I have see. a PWM channel object in here is because we wanted to echo what we did in GPIO controller. But PWM is kind of more likely to get close to me, I think. I think I yeah, same that. for the pin. That's true. It, there, there's nothing, there, there's no real difference except that you have two, like instead of having a state being on or off, you now have frequency and duty cycle and on or off. Uh, but that's it. Other than that, it's the exact same thing. And I'm still per fairly new to this. Uh, space. What? How do you start and stop these things? But how do you actually get any data from them? You, you don't. You write. That, that was my question. That, that was, was his like, question. You, it looks like they're. We're, yeah, we're only writing right now. You can't read. Oh, okay. So that's the question. So when you add read, uh, what the, would you name it? I'm not name even the, seeing that though in the uh, the Windows. No, they don't support read because they only support the hardware PWMing, which is writing. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Do any of the other libraries support read? Uh, yes, because like they Wire support. And or... uh, some of them do because they support uh, software PWM. Mm -hmm. For now, yes. we only support hardware PWM, so that's why we don't. And are we looking to do software PWM, like, say for now, but like, say, two weeks from now? In the future. Like, in the future, being like. We could, if there's next enough. Month. Yeah, there's definitely, um, like, great advantages of using software PWM. Mm -hmm. It's harder for us because we're running in, in, sure. in inside the CLR, so mm -hmm. there's way more room for errors. Yeah, if you're doing should, that super yeah. high frequency, then you can't. Yeah. So yeah. maybe maybe the open channel should take the mode uh, like Hardware as it reading or writing. Like, so like for now, it's mm -hmm. only reading, but like, we could always throw for writing right now, or don't even well, have to enough. Start and stopping same way. Yeah, and take, make it like a Not reading by default that? or something, but. Yeah, I'm thinking. But it, oh, we could this. add overload as well in the future, which would be the same. But. Okay. I see. Right, because you are returning void and you don't. Yeah. So I guess that, that would be my feedback. It's like, yeah, think about like how you would extend this for like software and for okay. reading. I used to have like, like a write PWM yeah. and, and, and like a stop writing yeah. or something like that. But uh, I, I checked the WinRT APIs and, and they had start and stop and they only supported writing, which was the same that we did. So that's why I went yeah. start and stop. Like, we can make breaking changes between the different preview releases. Joe, also yeah. the question, like, is there like any case where you want to open the channel and not start? 
maybe just starting should always open and stopping should always close. Or I I don't know, but mm. just thinking about it. Yeah, just the, the pattern in WinRT is the controller has a, a PWM controller has an open pin. That we, pin has yeah. start and stop and do something. It is two different operations that you perform in the hardware level. I, like you do, you do have to set it up, export the channel first, and then you start it. Whether or not you want to mix those two together, um, yes, it is. It is too cold. It was also kind of like to mimic what we do in um, in GPIO. And if in the future we want to do what you just said, like opening a PWM yeah, channel and setting the mode, then you do want to have like the two calls, or you could just pass in the the, the mode you want to start. I guess. Yes. But yeah, and I guess the same feedback applies here, where um, I'm going to change that IPWM driver into an abstract class instead. I think this is fine for like a like a V1 and like if you have some feedback to, to fix it. Right. I'm, I'm I'm not buying the doubles, but I, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think they should be decimal and then long or something. But I'm I'm not buying the, the double pin object. Like uh, I in general, like I don't like like the doubles <laughs> with hardware at all. So it floats and then it kind of stuff like this, but. <clears throat> Yeah, so let's talk about next step for a second because I think we have discussed the API I think in general to death. So what's the what's the next step for us getting feedback on this publicly? Are we going to ship a package for this and then the idea is uh, we don't know yeah we don't we don't know when but we will yeah we will uh, ship a, a package a blog post uh, we know with when. a preview one some between now and Thanksgiving right I didn't want to say I don't know if we want oh. to say it, but. <laughs> well, you know, it's dates, right? Dates are always subject to change. Okay. So, yeah, but the, the idea is... It's among friends and people on YouTube. So, <clears throat> so the idea is before Thanksgiving or during Thanksgiving, uh, uh, send out a, a preview one version of this. George Reed, spokesperson of Microsoft. <laughs> said before Thanksgiving, you have a GPI. Now we're package. committed. <laughs> That's, That's why I didn't want to say the dates. Okay. <laughs> let's, say, let's, say, let's say before Christmas. <laughs> Yeah. Twenty years. Yeah, we didn't say which Christmas. Yeah, we didn't say which Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, say which Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, we do ho holiday-based <laughs> shipping here. <laughs> so yeah, that, the idea is yeah. to to have a V one, have people play around with it, and then uh, or a yeah. V zero point one. Or... Right. We yeah. also have a we have a repo that will be uh, around that same time frame. We will be uh, making public. Uh, should we add like maybe some kind of preview in the package name or? So yeah, just to kind of make it clear, this is not stable. Just like yeah, it'll yeah, be like that. It'll just be like a all of our package, definitely. Yeah, because okay. yeah, we will do breaking changes uh, by getting feedback. And, and yeah, it would be nice if we could avoid renames, <laughs> like because it's always annoying people to operate. It's much easier if you have the name of the package somewhat nailed, and then you can just say you ship a preview version of the package, right? You might right, get this preview, right, right. and then I think that would just get upgrades, right? So what do you want to call would, the package, Microsoft? Device, well, that's uh, the whatever. thing. We should probably just start an email thread and let's say, like, you know, what, what, what are the names, DLL. you know, toss around and then just agree on that's the name we go after, and then unless something drastically changes, then I would I would keep the name. I mean, mm -hmm. I think we can all agree that it's a new get package, that it doesn't go into the platform, probably not in the foreseeable future, so having this as a new get package makes sense to me. Uh, it's just the, you know, the way we would ship things. Um, it's big enough to warrant being its own package, I guess. Um, and then the question is just, you know, what platforms do we do we target? Are we targeting to .NET Standard? Are we targeting Core? Um, we want to target .NET Standard if we can. System yeah. .device .low level. That's been my suggestion for for that stuff because in Windows it's all called under low level oh. contract. So yeah, like the only thing have we also considered it maybe even just putting it under System IO someplace? Has that already been? We never thought about no. that. No. no, I think we just bought up system device because it already yeah, existed. Mm -hmm. But I guess I owe what do you think makes sense? I mean, system I owe dot I owe hardware maybe. Low level? I mean low level seems a bit hardware odd seems in seems IO, I guess. But it is pretty low well. level though. I no, I agree, but I'm just saying, like, I think under device it would make sense, but under IO yeah, it would so imply yeah, something yeah, like file so system access or something, which it wouldn't be um it's not super discoverable as well. Yeah. Under I.O.? Right. Well, there's I mean, I low level, you no, wouldn't yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I would do something other than low level, like something about like integrated circuit or circuit board or GPIO or something, you know, like some, some sort of thing. Okay. Um, but 
just can't accept Windows, will you? System. I, I would have been <laughs> fine with you know System. Devices. GPIO. I thought that was cool. But that's the namespace. So yeah, yeah, yeah. GPIO. GPIO. And, and that, they're all the namespace packaged. is going to they're all the assembly. They're all packaged under the dot low level system for, devices dot low level for the assembly. Yeah. Okay. Well. Or the for the, the contract. Yeah. As it's called WinMD. Yeah. Which means so contract like, kind of means yeah. nuget in our, yeah. our situation. Yeah. I mean, oh, I, I, I mean, system device at low level, like I. I mean, it seems like as good as any other name I've heard so the new get package and assembly. Um, yeah. Okay. And then these namespaces can... You still Stay. want these namespaces to be Microsoft? Or do you want... No, to I mean, <clears throat> but, but if we decide to go with Microsoft, it would go all the way. I would make the package name... Mm -hmm. I would Microsoft .device right. at low level. I would make the Microsoft .device namespace, right? Like, yeah, otherwise, definitely. it's weird. Like, I mean, I think there's a discussion we should we should have whether we want to ship on our system or on our Microsoft, and then the question is, like, what namespace? Like, and so, if we're going with system dot device dot low level, does that mean that this namespace should be system dot device dot no, low level it. dot? No, just keep it this. Okay. No. We don't have a hard rule that says namespace have to align with. And there needs to be some sane organization. Like if it's system dot device dot low level, it seems reasonable that the system device namespace exists somewhere, right? But like we have this today with system dot reflection dot primitive system dot reflection dot blah right there, there's no namespace called primitives right it's just okay. it's like like the prefix should exist as a namespace somewhere and the suffix is then well you have to split it into some sort of assembly boundaries right okay. And, okay. and I think having like all of these as peers to each other makes sense given what these things represent um, okay. it seems the names are industry terms and there's no way for us to like come up with nicer names either so it seems all somewhat reasonable to me cool um, nice. Or we just make uh, the new get system dot device dot IOT. Or for the new package, yeah. yeah, so IOT is one of those things that I would avoid because it's like a, it's like like a, a marketing system. term like cloud that yeah. might change over time. And sure. Then, they go back to the 1990s name of consumer yeah, appliances. It's like, it's like when Windows and Windows, Windows 8 pushed the term modern everywhere. It's like, well, that will look really shitty in five yeah, years from you now. Like, it's <laughs> not really <laughs> modern. Don't do it. When, like, when Windows uh, NT came out, it was new the, technology. Yeah. yeah. It's like, how long is it going to be new? For the PWM Forever. controller class, <laughs> like, this years, PWM yeah. enabled should just be like a property. Instead, like and might be shorter name, like is enabled or just enabled. Uh, Sounds sure. like it doesn't actually, need to be. Yeah, we didn't talk through that, but um, I was actually planning to remove that. Remove uh, at all, or like? Yeah, uh, remove entirely. I like how. Uh, so my my meta feedback is like you should you should try to align the naming and the pattern across all the technologies that you can. Like it's a bit weird that some things have drivers, some things have controllers, some things have. Uh, what was the other terminology? You had like device and interfaces. Or okay, no. you had device, device here. Like, like stick to something here, and then ideally you align them pattern wise so that once people learn one namespace, <laughs> they go to the other one and like, oh, I know all it's this familiar. Works now. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then same goes for whether you have a constructor versus a factory. Right? And if you have a factory, like, what do you name it, right? So that like, these, these things gel, and like once you know the pattern, like everything else just follows. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, of course, there will be differences, <laughs> but. Okay. Start somewhere. Yeah, in Windows, it's uh, PWM has controller and pin. Uh, GPIO has controller and pin. I squared C has controller and device. Um, ABC has channel and controller. Controller and channel. Apparently, in PWM, a pin is the real object that you work with, mm -hmm. not the channel. But they all have controllers. So if I open the channel and you don't know, uh, like you know this channel like doesn't exist, or, like you're gonna get an exception, right? Yeah. But like same if you try like, to open a. So why, why cannot the API give me like the channels I can use? Like if you can, you can just enumerate through all of them. All of this, yes. all of this API completely assume that you know the hardware you're being to, because eventually you're yeah. gonna have to plug stuff in. Um, yeah, but the other scenario so is like you you, know you you get the Azure VM with stuff which is already connected and then or virtually connected and then you wanna know what's there, right? I mean, technically they can add UI and you can check how it's connected, but like if you don't have to do that, that would be like a really nice thing, <clears> thing to have, I think. But like, yeah, yeah, maybe out of scope for now, I guess. Right, this is kind of out of scope. All right, so unless there's any more feedback, then I would say we call it a day. Okay. And then um, I'll send out the votes, and then we start the discussion on what the name for the overall technology will be. Okay. And
I guess it is because like we don't need another version. Yeah, like yeah, I would not do it in a twelve plus meeting. Like I would just start a small set of people that usually <laughs> control the naming and then we just pick a name and go yeah. with it. Sounds good. All right, thanks people online. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh.